Hi guys, so that's Lesson here, and welcome back to the second part of this catching up series thing. Uh, in this part, uh, it's just, well, it's just bringing it up to date, so everything you see here I've either done in the last couple of days or today. <coughs> Ready for the live stream either tomorrow, which will be a Tuesday, which will be the 27th, or... Uh, the day after Wednesday, which will be the 28th. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this one, and I hope you enjoyed the second, uh, the first part. I'll probably be uploading these two together, just because they're pretty much the same thing. Uh, yeah. Thank you for watching, and I hope you watch the live stream when it, uh, when it uploads. Or when it comes out. Yeah. Still can't do my outro. Sorry guys, I said I'd try, but I, I can't at the minute. <laughs> Bye. Uh, I'm still dying. Anyone that needs it, that can only help our cause. Most people are good at breaking things. I enjoy putting them back together. Preston thought you might be able to figure out these plans for me. Sure thing. Let's see what you've got. Here you go. Wow. What a mess. Hmm. Looks like, uh, encrypted RF transmissions. Okay, so that gets routed through... What the hell? Teleportation? This is some pretty crazy shit. You sure it's for real? Either it is, or we end up building one hell of a paperweight. Well, whoever wrote this does seem to know what they're talking about. Could be a genius or totally insane. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. Anyway, the eggheads never think about the nuts and bolts of actually making something work. But, uh, looks like it's all here. Yeah, I'm gonna need some time to study this thing. The handwriting's pretty hard to make out. But, uh, you can get started on what he calls a stabilized reflector platform. Uh, it'll need some pretty high-grade metals. But it's basically not that different than the lining of a jet engine or something like that. Just tell me what we need so I can get started. Yeah, sure. Here's a list of what you'll need for the first piece. I'm pretty sure we've got all that at Sanctuary, if you want to build it there. While you're working on that, I'll get busy figuring out how to actually build the rest of this thing. Keep in mind, I can already see this is going to take a crazy amount of juice. Like if you had a spare nuclear reactor handy, we could probably use it. <laughs> and it's going to be big. So find a nice open building site with lots of power available. Heads up. I'm li- You got time to talk now? Is something the matter? You sound upset. What? Oh, no, no. We've just been traveling a while now, and I figure there hasn't exactly been equitable distribution of information. I've gotten a decent glimpse into your dirty laundry, but you still don't really know a whole heck of a lot about me. I uh, figured I'd offer to balance the board. So, got anything you want to know? What's with the outfit? After I started the agency, it just seemed like the sort of thing a detective ought to wear. I got some old memories, pre-war. Faded to all heck of guys dressed like this, doing what I do. Putting on the hat and trench coat, I figured it'd let folks know I was serious about the whole thing. Clothes make the man and all that. Guess I felt they made me the man I wanted to be. What do you remember about the Institute? It's all pretty hazy from back then, but now and then I get glimpses. Life inside the Institute, they keep you isolated. A single test chamber was my whole world for years. And someone was always watching. Then one day, you wake up on the other side. And that's it. They've cut you loose. Welcome to the brave new world. With such people in it. So, so who are you, Nick? That's a question I've been trying to figure out myself. For a long damn time. I know I'm a synth, authentic institute handiwork, but I'm still mechanical. 
Not bioengineered like the fancy synths giving everyone the willies these days. I get tune-ups now instead of checkups. My memories, my personality, they're all lifted from some cop who volunteered for an experiment back before the war. They scanned his brain and copied it onto the hardware that runs between my ears. Don't know why they chose to make a robot based on some pre-war cop instead of a math genius or a bioengineer. Hey, maybe that's why the Institute tossed me in the garbage instead of turning me into one of their people snatchers. Wait, the original Nick was from my time? Sure was. Which meant when I finally ended up out here, it was quite the rude awakening. I remember waking up one day in a garbage heap, a body in tatters and a head full of memories belonging to a man who'd been dead for 200 years. Suffice to say, it was a confusing couple of weeks. Folks didn't really know much about synths back then, so when I finally ran into people, they mostly treated me with caution rather than hostility. But the kids, <laughs> they weren't afraid. I think his name was Jim. The first person to actually speak to me after I got the boot from the Institute. My first human contact in this world. Grilled me for an hour. Once they'd seen I wasn't going to hurt anyone, the other folks in the neighborhood came out to ogle the mechanical man. It eventually turned into a pretty swell soiree. A local mechanic even gave me a once-over, free of charge. Those people, they, they treated me like a human being. I've been trying to return the favor ever since. It's a surprisingly rare trait out here sometimes. It's something I've noticed you got a fondness for. It's part of the reason I've stuck around this long. If you're good to people, they'll be good back. That's something I've always believed. Couldn't agree more. Well, I expect you're about as bored as can be listening to me rattle my skeletons. You should probably head out. What's up? Setting this to repeat. This is Ellie Perkins from Valentine's Detective Agency with a message for Nick's partner. We've got a new case and it sounds urgent. Stop by the office, I'll be waiting. Setting this to repeat. This is Ellie Perkins from Valentine's Detective Agency with a message for Nick's partner. We've got a new case and it's Too many folks these days count on violence to solve their problems. You only have to look around to see where that got us. Hey. Uh, any chance you got a second now? You all right, Nick? I wouldn't normally bother you with this sort of thing, but, uh, well, I know I can trust you at this point. For as long as I can remember, I've been getting these uh, flashes, memories of places I've never been. Things I've never seen. Memories of Nick's. They're not bad. They're just, um, they're just this inescapable reminder that I'm not the person I think I am. That I'm not a person at all. I'm just a machine pretending to be human. You think. You feel. You're more than pretending, Nick. Yeah, nice of you to say, but... Your kind don't usually have to deal with someone else's whole life trapped inside their skulls. Don't get me wrong. I know I'm in Nick's debt. These memories, they've, they've kept me alive. Nick was a hell of a cop. A guy with good instincts and a good heart. I always counted myself lucky they didn't load me up with some ex-con or whatever type might volunteer to let folks tinker with their gray matter. But it's thanks to Nick that I pass for human. 
why I get to live cushy in Diamond City, and every other synth is shot on sight. I know I got it good, but my entire life I owed a nick. Everything that makes me who I am, my judgment, my speech, hell, even my name, they're his. And I can't do a damn thing about it, because without them, without them, I'm nothing. A shell. All I want is a life where I have something I can call my own. You've already built a life for yourself, Nick. You've got the agency, a home, friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. You know, I, I'm just going to need some time to think on this. I appreciate you hearing me out. You're a, you're a real good friend. Thanks. You know, well now... I could use a hand if you're willing to take a crack at it. Sure thing. What's the case? Well, this one's straight out of the archives. Once upon a time in the land of Boston, there lived a king of organized crime, Eddie Winter. He was a bad man who did a lot of bad things, hurt a lot of innocent people. But he knew the end was coming, so he sealed himself inside a personal shelter located underneath the sub shop he used as a headquarters. An evil king in a sub shop? Does a meatball monster show up at some point? Yeah, from what I've heard, the pastrami golem is the one you really have to watch out for. Anyway, if you're done being a wise ass, the story gets even more twisted. The arrogant bastard wanted to cheat death, lived forever, so he could come out of that shelter someday into this brave new world. Sound familiar? Only Eddie didn't want to be a frozen banana. No cryo sleep for him, no. He invested his money in some sick, crazy radiation experiment. Jeez, you've really done your homework on this guy. I have. I uncovered a doozy. Eddie Winter went and turned himself into a ghoul, 200 years before it was fashionable. Hell, he was probably the first one. And I'm convinced that he's still locked inside that shelter. Safe and sound. Ready to come out and begin his evil reign all over again. I'm gonna find him and kill him. So that never happened. You in? All right, Nick. Let's get the bad guy. You're a good man. Now, I know where Winter's vault is, but the door is sealed with a complex numerical code. Lucky for us, Winter's arrogance knew no bounds. Back in the day, he recorded ten holotapes, incriminating different criminal associates. On each one, he hit a single number. We find all of those holotapes, we get all the numbers. We get all the numbers, we get the code. And then we get Winter. I've been putting together a file on this one for a while now. There's a pair of holotapes in here worth listening to, uh, including one of Winters that I managed to snatch from the Cambridge Police Evidence Lockup before getting swarmed by ferals. My gut tells me the Boston Police Evidence Terminals are the key to cracking this one. It's probably worth paying a visit to any of the departments you might have stumbled across. Nick. So, you got something for me? Maybe a pocket full of tapes belonging to an old ghoul? Finally got them all. Here. No fooling. Wow. That's some real solid detective work. Uh, they're older than dirt, but they've got Eddie's paw prints all over them. These are the real deal. 
and they've still got the code pieces in them. Let me run them through the old processor. Got it. One, nine, five, three, seven, two, eight, four, zero, six. That old thug's holed up in Andrews Station. Now, let's go bring down Eddie Winter. Hey, Valentine. Yeah? Would you like me to go with you? I never would have made it this far without you. Finally time for Eddie Winter to get his due. Nick. <sighs> that filthy toad's right on the other side of that door. Why don't you do the honor? Sure. One nine five three seven two eight four zero six. The fuck? Who the fuck are you? I'm the last human you're ever gonna lay eyes on. Huh. Oh boy, yo. Oh. If I had a sawbuck for every time somebody said that to me. But I ain't dead yet, am I? Just how the fuck did you get? No. No way. Not after all this time. Don't tell me you actually cracked my code. In the hollow tapes? <laughs> well, hey, it's only been what? 200 years? <laughs> well, look, I'm not sure what you thought you'd find. Gold, jewels, the secrets of the universe. But you get me, one guy, a ghoul, I guess you'd call me. Just living, surviving, and what I got, you can't have. That code? Huh, it was a joke. I just wanted to prove how dumb those feds were. Turns out, pretty dumb. So take your asses someplace else. I'm not going anywhere until I get what I came for. Yeah? And what's that? And who are you, huh? You look kind of familiar. But what are you, some kind of robot? Is that what it's like out there now? A world of robot overlords? I knew it. The name's Valentine. Nick. Valentine. Remember me? Valentine? The cop? Is that who you're supposed to be? Sorry, pal, but you ain't Nick Valentine. You're just some kind of, uh, machine. You killed my fiance, Jennifer Lance. There's some crimes even you can't get away with, Winter. Your fiance? You mean Valentine's fiance. Pretty girl. A shame what happened to her. But hey, you? Or, uh, you know, the real Valentine? He should have backed off when he had the chance. But what gives, Robot Man? Why do you even care? Some girl gets whacked 200 years ago, and you come into my home acting like a hot guy? Christ, look at you. You're not even alive. Then I guess I'm in good company. Welcome to your last stand. Not yet. done here. There's one more thing I've got to do. I, I wouldn't mind the company if you wanted to tag along. This is it. In this spot, 200 years ago, one of Eddie's boys put a bullet in Jenny Land's back. Now Eddie's as dead as Jenny and Nick. I, I'm at a loss. I, I just need some time to process all this. You mind if we get out of here? Yeah, that is if you're, if you're still interested in traveling together. I wouldn't blame you if you wanted some time on your own after all this. You still want to travel with me? Yeah, <laughs> I think I could suffer through it. Of course. Let's do it. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Come on, let's get out of here. And hey, thanks. Winter, I never properly thanked you for the... I'm glad I could help. Seems like it meant a lot to you. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. Winter was it. Uh -huh. The last proof outside of some 
long lost in don't you see nick you're finally free there is no other nick anymore just you no, i wish it was that easy but it's not because i was nick valentine i had his memories and his fears all that poor bastard's hope and i remember getting the call to head to some lab in cambridge to get that neurotrans whatever and the next thing I know, I'm in a trash heap. My family, my home, my entire life, gone. Then I discover all those things that they weren't even mine. Everything I ever was belonged to Nick. And I'd hoped with winter gone, the last hint of that old world snuffed out, I could, I could finally be free. But being out here with you, what I, what I finally realized after all this time was that taking down winter, it wasn't about Nick or Jenny or even you or me. It was about justice, about doing what's right. And that act of goodness, that's ours. All the good we've done, that's ours, and ours alone. And even if that's the only thing in this world that I can ever claim as mine, not Nick's, not the Institute's, but mine, then I can die happy. And none of it would have ever happened if it weren't for you. I'm not sure I'll ever be able to thank you for that. You don't have to, Nick. We're friends. This is what friends do. <laughs> you can't stop being noble now, can you? Well, come on then. We're not helping anyone standing around here. get this quiet.